I'm going to be talking about how to change the world with Webflow. Sounds like a big task, but what I'm hoping to show you over the next 15 minutes is that by building up some simple principles, you can make a big impact. I'm going to start by introducing myself and the work that I do as part of Side Labs. Then I'll talk about our principles for how we go about creating lasting change. And I'll give an example of a project that we're currently working on and the impact that it's having. And I'm also going to put the question to you. What can you do? How can you create social impact? So hi, I'm Lizzie. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a designer and no coder, part of a team at Side Labs in London in the UK. I'm passionate about using Webflow to make the world a better place. SIDE is an acronym which stands for Social Impact Digital Explorers. We strive to deliver social impact and we call ourselves digital explorers because we see design and building with no code as part of a process of exploration. We love to pioneer into uncharted territory and discover new and exciting things. We also love to stamp ourselves with our own acronym because we think it's so good. So our principles in action. I'm going to talk about the foundational building blocks that guide our processes in the context of an exciting project that we're currently working on. So at the heart of what we aim to do in our work at Side Labs is to enable others. This is where we have seen the most opportunity for us as an organization to create long lasting social impact. At Side, as you know, we love a good acronym. So our principles are embedded in this word as an acronym. So here we go. Would you look at that? So we have a beautiful pyramid with, with two sides. On the left hand side, with the sort of brown to turquoise gradient, we've got the foundational principles, nurture, learn and build. These are things that we aim to do at the start of a project or the discovery phase. So that's listening and getting to grips with what the needs are. Then on the right, with the beautiful Webflow blue to purple gradient, we have the second phase of principles, quick, adapt and empower, where we can really take everything that we've learned and start implementing it with the end result of empowering others. So that bottom right uh, block, empower, that's where, really where everything is leading toward and is the foundational block. So that's quite a lot. So I'm going to go into a bit more detail on each of these within the context of a project so that you can see how each one can come to life and also how you can take these principles and apply them to your own work. So first, let me introduce you to a project that we've been working on this year. The project is called Asylum Guides. And let me give you a little bit of background. Seeking asylum anywhere is a stressful and traumatic experience. And in the UK, the asylum system is incredibly hostile. It's lengthy and complicated, making it difficult to access. And this is where asylum guides come in. They are trained volunteers who quite often have themselves, they have experience of the asylum system, and they provide support to others seeking asylum. Now, we'd already built a website back in 2020, and now we've been working with them to problem solve further issues. So how do we use the principle of enable for asylum guys to create lasting impact? So going back to our pyramid, we start with the foundations, nurture, learn and build. You know, it will be easy 
uh, well, it would feel easy or it would feel exciting to run into a project with loads of solutions that we've come up with, loads of assumptions, and we want to get building quickly. But first, we need to listen. We called up Asylum Guide volunteer coordinators across the country and Asylum Guide volunteers to hear from them firsthand the issues that they are facing. And we just we just learned so much and discovered so much we didn't already know. And it really did challenge our assumptions about what the issues really are. And this approach of listening nurtures relationships. And it really means that we're learning and empathizing. And it's from this point that we can start to build. So what did we hear? We found that the main issue that asylum guides and asylum seekers are facing is a language barrier. So you can imagine if you arrive into a different country, a new country, you don't speak the language and you're given website links or a form and nothing makes sense. It's not in your own language. You can miss vital information. And this is exactly what is happening. Asylum seekers are arriving in the UK are unable to access information because it's not in their native language and it's also not provided in a way that is easy to navigate or easy to interact with. And this is what we identified that needed to be built using Webflow and no-code tools. So that is how we applied those first blocks. Those first blocks, nurture, build and learn, could be summed up as listening first. So who could you listen to? And I'm going to expand on this in a bit more detail later. Okay, this is where it gets even more exciting. The second phase principles of equip, adapt and empower. So first, equip. Through workshops with Asylum Guide staff and volunteers on the ground, through co-creation, together we came up with the idea of creating uh, an, an explainer video of the key information for uh, what to do when claiming asylum. And this will be provided in different languages. And we're, the aim is that it can be made easily and it can be easily added into their Webflow site by members of the Asylum Guides team. We needed to work with experts in order to uh, create the content and with an external translation agency. And I'm sure you can imagine that the whole process was, was quite lengthy and we met many obstacles. And that's where the principle of adapt really comes in. So we're equipping with the resource, but needing to adapt along the way. Um, for example, we had changes in UK policy uh, in the middle of while we were translating the content. So we, we're needing to actually adapt and pivot and change while we're doing it. And not only during the process, but also the solution we built also needs to have flexibility built in as a key feature so that the Asylum Guides team can respond quickly. So instead of creating one long video, we broke down the process into 23 mini videos. So individual sections can be replaced if needed, rather than having to redo the whole thing if anything in the system changes. So adaptability right in the core of the solution. And then finally, empower, the principle that everything is leading to. And this, in my opinion, this is where lasting impact really happens and where it gets really exciting. So currently, Asylum Guides volunteers are being trained on how to make these videos themselves in different languages, and we're giving them the uh, training in the Webflow CMS as well to be able to easily and effectively update the content straight onto the website. So if the first part of the pyramid can be summed up as listening, the second part could be summed up as giving. What could you give and how could you empower someone else? And how can you prepare to adapt and be flexible along the way? What difference is the Asylum Guides project making right now? 
Well, there's two main areas of impact. We've got the difference it's making for the volunteers and the difference it's making for the asylum seekers. So for volunteers, um, the asylum guides are equipped to create the flexible resources all the way right from the start to publishing it um, using Webflow as their medium. And they're also being equipped with digital skills as well. They're using uh, platforms like Google Slides and Loom, which means that they're being equipped with the digital skills to use these things. And for asylum seekers themselves, people who wouldn't ordinarily be able to access the services because of language barriers are now able to receive information and support faster in their own language. So going back to the enable principles, if you're thinking you'd like to do something in the area of social impact, but perhaps you're not quite sure where to start, here are a few thoughts. First of all, how do you know what's going to make an impact? impact and how do you know what of the many issues in the world to focus on? Well, the first step is to listen. Who could you listen to? Are there things happening close to you that affect either you or your people near you? And how might you start a conversation in which you can listen to the problem? And you can listen to your passions as well. Perhaps a cause is close to your heart. Can you listen to others who feel the same way? And what makes you feel the way you do? This can be a great way to narrow down what it is that you want to listen to. And then once you've identified and heard what's happening, how could you empower others to create the most impact? Sometimes it's not clear to someone who's in the middle of providing a service or in the middle of a problem what a solution can look like. But you can use your unique perspective to creatively problem solve. And I think what's so amazing about no code tools is that you really can think widely for solutions too. It might feel like you're doing yourself out of a job. But generosity and sharing knowledge really does go a long way. And if you can train someone up over doing it yourself, you've instantly doubled the amount of impact you can make. So I believe that to create lasting social impact, we need to enable others. And with Webflow, we can build high quality websites really fast. But we also want to build something that goes beyond just the website. The lasting change in the world through listening and ultimately empowering others to do great things. Thank you.